As you may know, it's my job to corrupt young people with a contagious, infectious idea of individual freedom. It's my job to encourage you to think for yourself, question authority. If there is one thing that Americans won't tolerate, it is lying by those who hold positions of trust, which is why we call them positions of trust. Welcome to Contemporary American History. Never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. And in all of my years of public life, I have never obstructed justice. And I think, too, that I can say that in my years of public life, that I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Well, I'm sort of break it, break it down like this. The extent of a politician's insincerity can be measured by how far around the world our station, our soldiers are stationed, and whether or not any of them can pronounce it. Let me further make it plain that the assassins in Beirut and their accomplices. Wherever they may be, but America will never make concessions to terrorists. That's what the president kept saying, but it is not, not what, what he was doing. doing. Ronald Reagan was offering weapons to the Ayatollah Khomeini in return for the release of American hostages. Read my lips. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. Read my lips. I did not. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. The main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on World Trade Center. Nothing. It was at this moment in a Florida classroom that Bush learned the second plane had hit the World Trade Center and that the U.S. was under attack. But here's what George Bush himself said almost three months later when asked about September 11th. I had, was sitting outside uh, the, the, the classroom waiting to go in, and I saw an airplane hit the tower of a, of a TV, you know, the TV was obviously on, and I, I used to fly myself, and I said, well, there's one terrible pilot. Folks, a question for you. Do you think it's possible that one of these politicians, whose judgment is so poor that he honestly thinks of himself as serving the nation, might occasionally be expected to indulge in a little patriotism? What do you think? I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through. First thing that I think about when I wake up in the morning. I wake up every day thinking about how best to protect America. We can't count on a surrender ceremony. There will be no surrender ceremony. To disrupt, dismantle, and defeat Al-Qaeda. To dismantle, disrupt, and destroy terrorists. To deny the world's most dangerous people. The world's most dangerous men. Access to the world's deadliest weapons. The world's most dangerous weapons. I mean, the problem is really with the people you cover, the politicians, and although their level of insincerity is astonishing, it's still kind of fun to hear them talk. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. Any reality is an opinion. You make up your own reality. Think for yourself. 